Hey guys, today we're going to deal with panning and volume automation in our Reaper projects. So let's fire up Reaper and get into it. Okay, so we've fired up Reaper, we'll create a new project and we'll create a new track, which we will arm for recording. Noting that the record monitoring didn't come on because we turned that off in a previous video, but if it did come on, just deactivate that. On track one, we're gonna record ourselves reading out this particular passage. This is Mr. Weber, demonstrating how a volume envelope can be used to make it sound as though I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now the volume envelope will raise the volume, so it starts now the volume envelope will raise the volume so it sounds like I'm getting closer and closer until I'm back where I started. A panning envelope can be used to move my voice from the centre of the soundscape where it's equally loud in the left and right speakers to move over to just the left speaker and then head across the room into the right speaker where it will stay for a little while before making its way back to the centre again. This may be useful in my audiobook that I'll make this term and will certainly be useful in the future when we match sound effects to movies. Now guys, I did make a mistake in the middle there. So let's just look at how we'd edit that out. Firstly, I'll trim the ending, the beginning, and I'll note that the magnet is not really useful for us today because we're not doing a musical project. I'll bring that forward. Let's have a listen and figure out where I made that mistake. This is Mr. Weaver, demonstrating how a volume envelope can be used to make it sound as though I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now the volume envelope will raise the volume so it starts, now the volume envelope. Okay, that was my mistake. So I'll just split in between here, split, leaving around about the same amount of silence in front to keep it naturally flowing. Uh, I press um, S to split, and then I press delete to uh, get rid of that track. Um, if you bring it straight up there, it puts a little crossfade. I'm talking to you. Now the volume envelope will raise. That's fine. All right, so I'm happy with that. Um, so moving forward, we're going to look at the uh, waveform and decide if we need to adjust our gain up or down. So the loudest sound should have reached somewhere between around about minus 20 or up to about minus 9 decibels. Um, I was actually recording that through the inbuilt microphone array because I'm trying to do these assignments sort of how you might have to do them at home with your own equipment. I'd suggest if you've got a headset from a phone that has a microphone on it that it's a bit better than the inbuilt microphone array, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. So we're going to decide now if we're happy with those recordings. Looking at the waveform, we can see that it doesn't actually clip or reach the maximum level of zero decibels full scale. So it, it seems to be a safe recording that we can keep, but I would just like to confirm what level it's peaking at. So here's what we're going to do. If it was still armed for you, just disarm it. If the mix is not showing, use Control M to make that mix of you show. And I want you to click on that meter there, which tells you where the sound peaked out, and it will reset it to minus infinity. Then hit W to rewind, space to play. This is Mr. Weber, demonstrating how a volume envelope can be used to make it sound as though I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now the volume envelope will raise. Now you see the that changing so to like minus ten point five until I'm back where I started. And now up to minus nine point three can be used when I reach my loudest point. The of the soundscape. And I can see visually that that is the loudest point, so there's no point listening to the rest. Minus nine point three that falls within the range we said of minus nine to minus twenty as an acceptable sort of maximum with our recording, uh, because basically we're trying to leave enough headroom above that maximum in case we have an unexpected peak that goes a bit higher than that. So that distance from the minus nine up to the zero is what we call headroom. And that's definitely an acceptable amount of headroom. So we're going to move forward. We've already turned off the snap grid. If you haven't done that yet, you should probably do that now. Now with track one selected, we're going to hit V. I'm going to hit control M to close the mixer. And we're going to be dealing with this volume envelope that pops up when we toggle it with V. We are now going to actually use that envelope to put some automation in. So I'm going to use the up arrow just to zoom in a bit. And let's listen to what I said at first in this video. This is Mr. Weaver, 
demonstrating how a volume envelope can be used to make it sound as though I'm walking further and further away. While... Okay, so just as I mentioned the, about walking further and further away, um, until that point, I want us to be staying uh, at this sort of point where we're at unity gain. We're not adding or taking away. We're not attenuating the volume at all. I'm going to control click on the envelope here and that will actually put a point on the envelope. And then I'm going to listen to what I say here. I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now the volume envelope will raise the volume. So it's okay, and then at this point where I say now the volume envelope is going to start raising, we'll consider that to be the bottom of our dip. So I'm going to cl shift click here, put a point, and drag that all the way down. Uh, looking at the number, it's saying about minus 10, minus 15. Let's try minus 20 as a starting point and around about minus 20. There we go. And I'm going to hit play. It can be used to make it sound as though I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now That's pretty good. I like that, that amount of drop for minus 20. Um, you know, I, you might want to fiddle it, try like, is 11 better? I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now the I like the more dramatic minus 20. What about minus 30, hey? So I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So let's go split the difference. Minus 25. And hear what I say here. Now the volume envelope will raise the volume, so it sounds like I'm getting closer and closer until I'm back where I started. Okay, obviously at that point where I'm back where I started, around there should be zero. So shift clicking or control clicking, as I've said, can put a point. Shift clicking is the ideal one. Shift click. Now I can actually just double click on that one, and that puts it up to unity gain, zero decibels change. Let's hear that dip. Sound as though I'm walking further and further away while talking to you. Now the volume envelope will raise the volume, so it sounds like I'm getting closer and closer until I'm back where I started. A panning envelope. Okay, so that, that point there is all we're doing with the volume envelope. So I'm gonna actually close that down for now. But for you guys, make sure before you do your screenshot that you, you put that back so I can see it. Press V. Panning envelope, press P. I might even put a marker here, Shift M, and I'm going to type in the word panning. Let's hit uh, play. A panning envelope can be used to move my voice from the center of the soundscape, where it's equally loud in the left and right speakers, to move over to just... Now, at that point, is where I want it to start moving away from the center. I'll shift click. To move over to just the left speaker and then head across the room. Okay, so I, in a short space of time, I wanted it to reach the left speaker, which is all the way up. You see it says 100% L, 65% uh, L, 100% L. Uh, let's have a bit of a listen to how quickly that moves across. Right speakers, to move over to just the left speaker and then even in my laptop speakers, I can still hear that moving to the left right there. Right speakers, to move over to just the left speaker and then head across the room into the right speaker. By that point, I want it to be in the right. So bring it all the way down to 100% R. To move over to just the left speaker and then head across the room into the right speaker. Where it... By the way, shift clicking was placing those points there. Speaker, where it will stay for a little while. Before... Okay, I've said it's gonna stay there. Uh, I should put another point there, just so it's staying there for a little while. Speaker, where it will stay for a little while before making its way back to the center again. And at that point, double. I've shift clicked to make a point. Double click that point to center it. Move over to just the left speaker, and then head across the room into the right speaker, where it will stay for a little while before making its way back to the center again. This may be useful in my audio book that I'll make this term, and will certainly be useful in the future when we match sound effects to movies. Alrighty, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press P to hide that envelope. So I'm going to rename that track. Firstly, let's zoom out a bit with page down. And I'm going to come over and double click and call that one automated track. I'm going to create a new track under that. I could either double click here or do control T, create a track, which I'll then arm, ensuring that input monitoring is indeed off. I'm going to call this one Fixed Adjustments. Fixed Adjustments. And with this particular one, I'm going to now apply some random colors. So let's select both tracks. 
right click, track color, set them to random colors. I might try again. They're both similar. That's a bit better. Well, that's boring. Try again. Nice. I like those two. All right. So now I'm going to arm track two and move the playhead after my previous track finished. Might even put a marker there as well. So at this point, I'm going to make a new recording reading out this little script. Automation is one way we can make changes to volume and panning, but a simple way of making a fixed change to volume or panning of a track is to do it in the mixer, which can be toggled on or off with Control M. After I finish this recording, I'll use the mixer to pan this track 80% right and turn the volume down to minus three decibels. I won't adjust the settings for track one in the mixer as I already automated my changes for that track. Okay, so I might just trim off my little hesitation at the start, trim that last track there, move the marker over a bit closer. And I mentioned that I'm going to open the mixer with control M. I said in there that I would lower the volume to minus three decibels approximately. So that's close enough. And then I mentioned I would pan it to the right. The panning's not easy to see when the mix is this small. So I'm going to find the point here where I can actually stretch that upwards. Suddenly the panning knob appears. So now I can actually pan that 80%-ish to the right. There we go, okay? So I don't mind if it's uh, approximate. You can right click on there and choose a number, minus 3.0 and close that down and we're happy. Okay, so uh, we've made those changes. Now let's just hide our mixer and let's show the volume and panning envelopes for track one by doing V and P while track one selected. Page down just to tweak and page up to tweak the vertical zoom and then the down arrow, W to rewind, down arrow and up arrow to adjust the horizontal zoom until I can see the whole track. And when I'm assessing, you'll be able to see your volume envelope, your panning envelope, and the fact that you've got your track two um, after track one as I requested. Okay, I'll just, un I'll disarm that one now. Um, you should probably have a listen back, but I think we're ready to render now. So let, you should have, by, by the way, saved it by this point. Save project as, this is year eight, term two, task 3.1. Do blogs again, that's good enough. And I will create a subdirectory, make sure the media ends up in that folder. Hit save, excellent. File render. Now I have to check all these settings. We're wanting to do the master mix, the entire project, we want the format to be MP3. That, that file name there is completely fine. Task 3.1 with your name. And that folder, we'll just put it in the project folder. You could specify a different one. Just say, yep, that's fine. And hit render. And because for our second uh, track, we put it 80% right, you see there's not much in the left there. And that's exactly as it should look when you output it. Um, if we look closely, you might even see those points where it goes from left to right with the automation, just over here. Um, if you can sort of see those differences in the track there. Okay, so show an explorer. Upload that MP3 file, which is about one megabyte. Upload that to sector. And then we close that down. And we've got that framed beautifully for our screenshot. Windows print screen. And we're going to open up a new file explorer window, navigating to the pictures slash screenshots folder where that new screenshot is sitting. We then rename it. We want it to be uh, year eight, term two, task 3.1, Mr. Weber or J Blogs, whatever you want to call it. Well, we'll just call it your name, thanks. And leave the PNG extension on it then upload that one sector and you're done. Well done. Okay guys, hopefully you learned how to automate the volume and the panning. Um, hopefully you got something out of that. Please subscribe and I'll catch you next time.